Erev Tov. Good evening, friends. You're watching Israeli News Live. I'm Stephen Bendenun, your host, and wanted to bring you up to speed on some information uh, coming out of Israel, also the United Nations. UN leaders, uh, they're backpedaling. They said there's no concrete evidence of an abduction. Uh, this is something that's being reported in the Jewish press. Uh, and just a really interesting article. This actually came out on June the 18th. Uh, says the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon appears to be retracting uh, his condemnation on Saturday of last week's kidnapping of three Israeli teens by Arab terrorists. Uh, in his statement at the time, Ban had spoken of his deep concern over the trend towards violence on the ground and its intended loss uh, loss of life. Uh, but he says uh, the reference to an IAF bombing that followed four missiles from fire from Gaza at Isra Israeli civilian population centers ended with Ban's pleas that Israel and Gaza terrorists both exercise restraint and lend urgent support for the release and safe return of the three youths. Thus, it makes no sense that Ban's spoke, uh, spokesperson would follow such a statement on Tuesday night by telling journalists the UN has no concrete evidence that that 19-year-old uh, Ayal uh, Yafrach and 16-year-old Naftali uh, Frankel and Gilad Sha'ar were actually kidnapped by terrorists last Thursday as they hitchhiked home from the Sabbath from Gosh Itzion. Uh, Israeli Public Radio quoted uh, Faran Haq, the spokesperson, as saying the United Nations also does not have in an independent investigative unit that could even confirm the incident. You know, it's funny, though, when, when things like this happen uh, to the Palestinians, if something bad were to happen to them, you can believe the United Nations, along with uh, the United States and every other country in the world, will condemn Israel for the acts that they call aggression against the occupier uh, of, of, of an occupied nation. Uh, they automatically put the Palestinians as a state, when indeed they're actually not a state. But yet, the world has already recognized them as a state. The, the Vatican has recognized them as a state. So in essence, they are a state if you look at it even from a biblical perspective because of the forces of the world are so declaring that to be so. Another interesting art article from Giulio Miotti in Israel's National News uh, is titled, Op-Ed, The Vatican's Resounding Silence. Uh, Giulio wrote in here on the, uh, June 19th, he says, A few days ago, an ecumenical prayer was celebrated by Pope Francis in the Vatican, in the presence of the Palestinian Authority's President Mahmoud Abbas uh, and Israel's pri uh, President Shimon Peres. The Islamic clergyman who offered the prayers for peace in the Vatican ended with a quotation from the last verse of Surah 2 in the Quran, which reads, You are our protector, so give us victory over the disbelieving people. That's kind of ironic, isn't it? The disbelieving people. Give us victory over the disbelieving people. Well, according to the Muslims, it would be the Christians and, of course, the Jews that are disbelievers. Mainly Jews being disbelievers. Because if you read the Quran, when it talks about Moses, that Moses could not go into the promised land with the Israel, the Quran actually states that the Israel was a stiff-necked people, which we do know that from the Jewish Bible as well, but that, God could, that Moses would not go over with them, but instead he went over and he got up with two different Arabs and they became the promised chosen people of God. Totally contrary to the word, because why? They considered the Jews to be disbelievers or unbelievers, you might say. So it's really not even the Christians, it's directed at the Jews. Julio Miotti goes on to add in here, the disbelieving people are the unbelievers or infidels, a few days later, three Jewish teens were abducted by terrorists coming from Abbas territory and returning to it. And the Vatican stood silent. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a shame that the Catholic Church and the Pope didn't raise their voice calling for the release of the Israeli teens. 
During the Gulf War of 1991, Pope John Paul II only protested after 19 Iraqi scuds had fallen in Tel Aviv. Millions of Jews had to wear gas masks inside their own houses, and he mentioned the civilians, not the Israeli Jews. In 2009, Pope Benedict the, the 16th spoke out repeatedly against the Israeli war centered on Gaza. The authorities of the church and Benedict the 16th himself raised their voices in condemnation of the massive violence that has broken out in Gaza Strip in response to other violence. Only after Israel began bombing the military installations of the terrorist movement Hamas, not before, not when Hamas was launching rockets every day against the Jews in the surrounding area. You see, that's what Gulio brings out in his, his report there. We didn't, the Vatican didn't say a word about Israel being slammed with rockets on a daily basis. They don't say a word about the casualties in Israel. Oh, but do something against the Palestinians, the people that they are coming up strong with, the small group that they come up strong with in order to gain control of Israel. Then that becomes a major issue. On Friday night in Itmar Tamar, uh, Forget took part with other friends in a scouting event until midnight close to her village. She arrived home and knocked on the door. Nobody answered. She went inside with her neighbor and she saw her mother, her father, her three brothers, respectively, 11, uh, 11, three years old and three months old, slaughtered with their throats cut. What did the Holy See say? Nothing. This is Jewish people murdered by Palestinians in cold blood. As he says here, her ch the children, 11, 3, and 3 months old, all their throats slit. And the Vatican says nothing about this. The Vatican, which pro uh, professes to deplore violence on both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian equation, has been totally silent on the slaughter of Israel, uh, excuse me, of the uh, Fogels. Neither uh, the U.S. institutionalizing churches nor the Vatican made reference to the Itmar attack at all. And now it is in turn of Gilead Sha'ar, Ayal Yafra, and Naftali uh, Frankel, and the Vatican's excuse or not speaking out against the crime of abducting three innocent Jews might be because the anger of the Arabs' perpetrators is justified in the Pope's eyes. It's just amazing. It's actually it's quite out appalling. You can read the rest of Gulio's article here on Arut Shiva. Again, uh, his article is entitled "The Vatican's Resounding Res uh, Resounding Silence." Yeah, anytime it comes to Israel, everyone is silent. It has to be pretty something pretty drastic, and then normally it's a, a late uh, sympathy plea. Why don't they do something about it? Well, they're not going to. But thank God for the Italian, Giulio Miotti, in his stance for Israel. I'm Stephen Benjamin, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Bahu Hashem.